guys, welcome to an episode. Today I'll be talking about Humpy's thousand-year-old water management, intelligent system of storing water, aqueducts and canals in Humpy, amazing ancient water network. Humpy was once a thriving place and formed an important part of the Vijayanagara Empire. In addition to its beautiful monuments and temples, Humpy had an extensive network of aqueducts and canals that spread across the whole area. Humpy has a large number of temples. Water tanks form an integral part of the temple's architecture. Most of the temples have a tank constructed near them to carry out ceremonial and functional purposes. All these tanks were connected through a water system. In this episode, we are covering water management and royal and public baths. This video will also cover aqueducts, step wells, queen's bath and octagonal water pavilion, bojanasala, pushkarinis of temples, wells in temples, pools which had water channels, and supply arrangements 600 years back. It is a wonder that the rulers of Vijayanagara Empire had managed to build such an intriguing network of waterways that reached every corner of Hampi. Pushkarini or water tank in Hampi. Such structures were commonly built during the great Vijayanagara Empire. 14th century and were typically located within temple complexes. The massive water tanks have large stone steps that allow people to get into the water easily. The water tanks are connected to an extensive network of stone aqueducts and canals, which in turn drew water from the nearby Tungabhadra River. How did half a million people survive for centuries in arid conditions with very little rainfall? The water here is not recent. There have been many frequent variants. The entire demand for this huge population was met by harvesting and harnessing the rainwater that fell across the settlements using an intelligent system of storing the water and planning the settlements around it. There are a series of trenches and fences on the hillsides. They trap the water and collect the rainwater and direct them in a particular direction. It's not just collecting the water that falls directly from the sky into the tanks, it's curving through an extensive system, saturating the soil, saturating the hillside, and allowing it to populate slowly. By the time the water reaches into the Pushkarani, it's crystal clear. The level of the water that we are seeing now is the, really the lowest. It would never go dry, and this semi-active system. There are many restoration works going on in the hillside. Hampi is unique. It's not only about the monuments alone, it's where these monuments are located. The hills themselves are a geological phenomena. What was the type of management through which they could sustain the resources and system they built for 400 years? These ancient systems, if properly utilized, can help generations to come. We have to restore it because it's an ancient technique and we should not lose it. Also, this ancient technique should be showcased to our present and future generations. We have to take these ideas of principle and sustainable waste or management and use it in a way that could be applicable in contemporary society. Hampi was once a thriving place and formed an important part of the Vijayanagara Empire. In addition to its beautiful monuments and temples, Hampi has an extensive network of aqueducts and canals that spread across the area. It is a wonder that the rulers of Vijayanagara Empire had to manage such an intriguing network of waterways that reached every corner of Hampi. The aqueducts and canals of Hampi are like an attraction for tourists 
and modern architects alike, who marvel at the skilled planning of the waterways in the ancient village. Hampi was an important center of activity during the period of the Vijayanagara Empire, and the rulers contributed to the architectural development of the area in a major way. The architectural development also included the construction of a planned water network that included large canals. The waterways were planned to fulfill the needs of water in Hampi. The interesting network of aqueducts and canals in Hampi. Hampi is covered by a network of waterways that are in various sizes. The network of canals connects Hampi with everything from palaces to temples to water tanks to agricultural lands. These ancient aqueducts and canals were used to bring water from the Tungabhadra river to the tanks and baths. There are aqueducts built underground so that they were used to supply water to the temples in Hampi. A major branch of the aqueduct supplied water to the step tank, a large and deep water reservoir located between in the royal enclosure. Fascinating architecture of the aqueducts and canals in Hampi. Hampi is dotted with several big and small water tanks spread across the public areas, temples, and as well as the royal enclosure. The well planned water supply system provided water to all the tanks in Hampi. The remarkable water supply system provides insight to the exceptional city planning carried out by the architects and city planners of the Vijayanagara Empire. The main stone aqueduct in Hampi runs from the east to west. In the royal enclosure, it is fed by water from the Kamalapura tank. First, the aqueduct provides water to the huge public tank and then proceeds to feed the step tank. The stone aqueduct then branches off to the north and west directions. It then feeds several other big and small tanks situated in royal, including the Queen's Bath and Octagonal Bath. The younger generation and architects should come forward to learn and investigate the ancient techniques adopted by our ancestors in Hampi. We should also think about using the rainwater cleverly. Sit back and relax as you marvel at the Hampi's thousand year old water management system, intelligent system of storing the water. Enclosure.